joining us today to talk about the Avid Adobe partnership and our exciting new integration of Premiere Pro into Avid Media Central is John Barry, Adobe's Strategic Development Manager for Australia and New Zealand for the Creative Cloud Suite. JB began his Adobe life in 2009 as an industry ambassador, becoming the ANZ Adobe Video Specialist in 2011 before migrating into the Strategic Business Unit where he brings 20 plus years of post-production experience with Adobe solutions to broadcast, film, and video creators across Australia and New Zealand. Today, we'll discover how the Avid and Adobe partnership enables seamless cross-platform integration and collaboration, and how Premiere Pro users from digital teams to production teams to marketing teams can seamlessly ingest, search, edit, and share content in Avid production environments. Let's take a quick look at the new Avid Media Central Cloud UX integration with Avid's Craig Wilson, broadcaster and media enterprise production evangelist. The new integration between Media Central and Adobe Premiere supports a wide range of workflows, including news, post-production, and even all Adobe environments working with Avid Nexus shared storage. For news, journalists can create stories and edit sequences in the browser-based Media Central Cloud UX client, including adding voiceover and dissolves, which can then be finished by editors using Adobe Premiere. Adobe editors can access content from the Media Central Production Management System using the Media Central Cloud UX panel inside Premiere and bring it in to edit without the need to rewrap or move the media. This gives the editors access to browse or search any media which is on the system, including using the power of phonetic searching to look in the audio of interviews. Once their edit is done, they can send it direct to a playout server or return it to the production management system to be published to social media via Media Central Publisher. It's an integrated end-to-end -end workflow, including metadata exchange via the new Metadata Mapper tool. For broadcast post-production workflows, a sequence edited in Media Composer and checked into Media Central Production Management can also now be opened and edited in Premiere, bringing in all the layers and the effects which can be translated. Template projects will be a huge time saver for Premiere editors. They can create projects, populate them with the folder and bin structure they want, and add footage like titles or images that would be regularly used. Once the project is saved to Avid Nexus, other Premiere users or other members of the production team using Media Central Cloud UX can then take that project and create it as a template for anyone to use. Premiere productions can also be created. Outside of the edit room, with Media Central Cloud UX, users can view footage and edited sequences from any of the connected clients, whether they've come from Media Composer or Adobe Premiere. There's a whole new world of collaborative possibilities with the new integration between Avid and Adobe. The new integration... Let's hand over to Craig and John who will walk us through the history of Avid and Adobe's partnership and discuss the latest groundbreaking Avid Media Central integration for Premiere Pro. That's great, Dave. Thanks very much. And good morning, everybody from uh, Aberdeen in Scotland. Thank you very much for taking the time to, to join us today. Uh, so, John, just a, a quick couple of questions before you go through your presentation. You know, what, what kind of demand have you seen over the years for closer collaboration between Avid and Adobe? Thanks, Craig, and uh, thanks everyone at Avid for allowing me to come on board for the APAC uh, arm of this uh, messaging. The kind of customers that I've been working with are predominantly in broadcast, and there's been always this desired overlap between the Media Central integration and the Adobe tool set. Um, so yeah, I think there's quite a lot of people that would be very interested in this topic. And having speak, spoken to a few customers myself, they are extremely excited by what this uh, possibility is for them as far as being more efficient. I think that's one of the key things, John, isn't it? It's about that ability of easily sharing content between perhaps teams that in the past have been a, a little bit you know, dis disconnected. And I think you'll talk about this in your, in your presentation, but I think one of the key things here is that the integration that, we're, that, uh, that we've developed together is actually suitable for a whole range of different workflows. It's not just one particular one particular segment as well. So it, it could be broadcast, it could be working with closer with, with digital teams as well. So it's really trying to span that, that complete end-to-end -end workflow suite. 
Yeah, for sure. Uh, a lot of people don't realise that Adobe and Avid have had quite a bit of a partnership history. So I thought I'd go through a slide deck here that just gives a little bit of insight onto what that partnership has looked like over a handful of years now. Uh, so it began in 2012, uh, where we officially started to license the Avid DNX HD and then the HR MXF wrapped uh, codec and decoder. And that went into Premiere Pro and After Effects and Media Encoder. And that was across both Mac and Windows. And then in 2015, there was the uh, ISIS, uh, smaller ISIS uh, storage that was optimized for Premiere Pro. And so over the years, we've continued to develop the relationship. And then things sort of took a bigger turn when we went to NAB show. Uh, that'd be the next slide. Thank you. Uh, 2016, where the Media Central UX panel was uh, first brought in. And that started to kind of give people quite a bit of interest as to how this, this type of relationship could help them start to work with some of the isolated teams that were working on Adobe tools, and then the other teams that were working with the Avid tools and start to find ways for them all to integrate together. And then this year, Obviously, the, the Media Central Cloud UX panel and connector is just a, a huge leap forward and uh, something I'm very excited about. I think my customers are super excited. I'm excited by what I've seen so far. So I just want to go through um, some of the things that I've seen uh, that are user benefits for this. And so really, there's three sort of buckets here. There's searching, collaboration and publish. And under search, I see that the ability to browse and search from within the integrated Premiere panel is a huge time saver. And that metadata exchange that happens as well now is, is going to make things way more efficient. The phonetic search that's inside of the Media Central engine is, uh, you have to see it to believe it really, for most Premiere Pro users, they will not have really seen something like that. And so the fact that that's integrated in is an excellent um, use case of efficiency for search. The collaboration piece, the, the ability to create and then open a Premiere Project template, uh, that's something that I'll show a little bit more of um, in a few slides later. But this ability to be working with native Premiere Projects and creating templates from uh, inside of the Media Central platform is, is huge. And being able to open Media Composer Central uh, sequences inside of Premiere Pro as well. Big, big step forward. And the review and approval process where you can start to move things out to the cloud and you can really extend the kind of experience that uh, you've got different people that are part of the whole post-production pipeline um, as part of that collaboration piece. And then finally publishing, being able to publish the Premiere projects and send out to playback as well, especially for news. So that's a huge thing. Mentioning news, um, being able to combine the Premiere editors into the news team and make one cohesive team. I've seen a lot of customers where they have got a mix of Premiere Pro seats and then Media Composer seats and Media Central usually is sort of part of that centralization of all of the story content coming in together. And so having that combination now just uh, solidifies that footprint of news teams. And that extends out to the social media site as well. On the post-production end, having native Adobe productions capability inside of both the storage from Nexus and then being able to confidently go in and start using the new um, productions platform inside of Premiere Pro inside of this ecosystem is a, is a huge deal. Um, being able to be flexible with the offline and the online tools of choice depends on who comes in. You've got a centralized way that everything is connected, but there's that flexibility of choice for which tools are being used um, to do the offline and all the online. And then that integration between the, the PAM um, and the MAM with the storage and having, again, that whole cohesive experience through the whole post pipeline. And then on the remote side, I find this really exciting, especially in COVID times where we really do have a, a new shift in the way, that, uh, the way that we work. And even after COVID settles down, we probably won't 
go back to the things uh, the way that they were before. So remote, having asset preparation through browser, um, having sequence editors, it's already been done through the browser as well. And then that review and approval all being connected to the craft editor, being able to, to do that work inside of Premiere Pro and then publish it all back into the, the cloud is a huge benefit. So there's a few things that I personally like and I wanted to just sort of highlight those ones. Being able to edit with the Premiere Project inside the browser. That's, that's a huge thing. Um, having that Premiere Pro template preview. So if you are a producer or some sort of content producer and you're not quite sure whether or not you've got the right project, you can look on the side there to see inside what the bins, we call bins, the folder structure and all the other assets that are already pre-populated into that template. I find that hugely beneficial before committing to creating the project, making sure that it is exactly the one that you need. And the review and approval of the Premiere projects, being able to open that up and uh, have someone remotely be able to see the edit without them having to have the full uh, ecosystem of, of a, a full NLE of Premiere Pro and being able to work this way is uh, hugely beneficial. And that phonetic search that I mentioned earlier, this is the panel inside of Premiere Pro and being able to do a phonetic based search on certain keywords that then show up a listing of all of the clips that are associated to that term, but then also where inside that clip that particular word is being said. And then once making that decision, you can bring that footage into Premiere Pro. It's a huge, huge time saver. And then of course, in the news, being able to work with the rundown and then being able to send to play out. These are new feature sets that I think a lot of people will be very excited. Getting that cohesive uh, news team where there's different footprints of what tools are being used, but this centralizes that whole end-to-end -end experience. And then finally, uh, the thing I like is this continued partnership. I think there's more great things that we can do together. And so uh, looking forward to doing more of these sorts of uh, breakdown seminars with you guys. So John, that's great. Thanks very much for, for doing that and giving us a, an, an overview of, of what, the, uh, what the partnership really is. And I think that's one of the, the, the key things about this is that this is a partnership that has existed for a number of years. Uh, and now it's extending it and, and taking it even even further down. Uh, maybe I could drill down a couple of things um, that you that you mentioned there. One one of the workflows that uh, that the new panel supports is, of course, Premiere Productions, as you as you mentioned. Uh, maybe for people who are not familiar with with Premiere Productions, are maybe you could talk a little bit about that and how that enables or collaboration in the in the Adobe world. Sure. Um, there's another platform that's sort of cloud-based called Team Projects, and it is different. So if you're familiar with that, it's a very different ecosystem. The productions ecosystem allows you to have a centralized storage and centralized folder that's nominated as the hub of connected projects. So what we're enabling users to do is have a dedicated project for a specific piece of the workload. For example, you could have a project that acts as a super bin or a super folder that just holds all of the dailies and you could break that down as a project per daily then that project can be opened even if it's locked and there's a locking mechanism that happens within the ecosystem as well where when it's locked you can still access those clips and then have your own project dedicated to just working on sequences and that means that we've now distributed the load of opening projects because they have their own specific use case of why they exist. And that means that the launch times are much quicker as well. What happens though, is when you bring in a clip from a project that's used just for ingest dailies, you can drag that clip inside of your working sequence. And that sequence is part of a separate project. And that project only worries about the sequence. Now the thing is, everything is cross-referenced. So the clip that's being used in the edit is cross reference to the project that it came from, which removes any kind of duplication across the projects. And so this now enables people to split the workload out and confidently run with a single source of truth as far as the assets go. And even if a project is locked, you can have other people making those updates and saves to those projects where 
you get notified that there's a new uh, saved version of that particular project. You can refresh it and then you can continue to use the, um, the, the content that's inside of that project as though it's another bin. Yep. Very cool. Very, very cool. Um, though, again, one of the things that you mentioned there, and, and we'll look at this in a little bit more detail in, in, in my presentation in a short while, is that Media Central Cloud UX, you know, it runs in a web browser. So, you know, one of the things that you obviously don't need is you don't need a sort of high spec machine that would you require to, to run, a, you know, an NLE on. And I guess one of the things here is about extending access to media outside of the edit suite. So what sort of benefit do you think that can bring to, to Premier users as well? Yeah, I definitely think the um, review and approval process is going to be the number one beneficiary of this. Um, having having the ability to check in on what's happening on an edit uh, remotely where you're able to just operate through a browser uh, means that you could be doing it through a device that is not even a, a traditional computer. Um, that opens up a lot of possibilities and it's, it contains that fidelity that you might need as well through that process, an exchange of... Um, notes as to what it is that might need to be adjusted through uh, that process of not having to have someone sit next to you. They could be remote, they could be in another room, they could be anywhere else in the world. And I guess that's one of, the, one of the, the, the key things that, of course, we've all had to deal with this year is, is that aspect of remote workflow um, where, you know, traditionally, perhaps you know, we were together in the edit suite um, when we were doing work. But now, of course, teams are, are much more distributed and, and are working, as you say, not just between, you know, the same, the same city, for example, but even potentially across, across different, uh, different countries. So just to pick up finally, John, um, on, on, on one of the things that you said there is a, about the partnership. Um, I think from an AVID perspective, this is something, of course, we see as something that's going to be ongoing um, and, and working together to you know, deliver more workflows as we, as we move forward um, in, the, in the future um, as well. Um, clearly, at the moment, if, if people are interested in this, we're very, very keen that they contact yourselves or contact, contact us and we can obviously provide them more um, information and, and demonstrations of of the kind of workflows that uh, that we can uh, that we can support. But what do you think this says about the kind of commitment between the both companies to to really help the industry get through the, the sort of times that we're in at the moment? Yeah, that's a good perspective. Um, I think what I what I feel is happening here is there's quite a lot of confusion and and um, there's a lot of want to figure out what it is the next step's going to be and to not get caught out like everyone sort of did get caught out with the COVID uh, pandemic and to, to have themselves set up in a completely different way that's, that's more synergistic. And I think this partnership shows that that's 100% what this is about. It's about having the customer come first and having the customer's needs met and by partnering um, I think it, it means that customers have got the best of both worlds. Yeah, John, that's great. Listen, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, to, to join us um, today. Um, and I really think and, and hope that we can continue to work together in the future and, and, and show more of the great collaboration workflows that exist between uh, Media Central and, uh, and Premier as well. So, John, thanks very much. <laughs>